I mean, let's twist this a bit. So sorry for the guy cutting the bushes. Triumph Tiger 1200, this is the XCA edition. Let's check it out. Typical, a little bit Triumph sound. So Triumph Tiger, I love Triumph, man. They make great bikes. I had a Triumph Tiger 800 before I upgraded to the GS1250. Uh, what an upgrade, love that bike. So this is gonna be a hard comparison because every bike I compare, I compare to the best bike in the world, in my opinion. My buddy was kind enough to let me take this for a spin. This is a 2021 model, I believe, or 2020. Ooh, those brakes are sprightly. Seating position is super comfortable. My legs are even a little bit more forward than the GS, I feel. I mean, it's... Hmm. All right. That, uh, I don't know what riding mode I'm in at the moment. I think I'm just in the comfort mode, but the, the throttle does feel a bit sluggish on this thing. But I will say there's a ton of power. Like, you feel like you've got a lot of power but it just kind of feels slightly sluggish. And when you're turning, the ergonomics of turning, let's talk about that. So when I'm turning on this bike, ooh, gotta watch these guys. When I'm turning on this bike, it feels a bit like um, I have to really pull it. Like it doesn't feel as nimble as the GS where it just kind of really goes wherever you put it. It kind of feels like you really have to pull on it to get it to, to come into these corners so so this thing actually has more horsepower I believe than the GS but um, I'll have to double check that if I'm wrong I'll put the actual horsepower up on the screen but um, let me let's twist this a bit all right got a tight corner coming up here Man, those brakes, man, great brakes. Absolutely great brakes. Absolutely great brakes. Really, really can stop on a dime with these Brembos. I, I would dare to say that these brakes are better than the BMW brakes. They really, really grab. And this bike is super comfortable, you know, like really, really comfortable. The riding position is super nice. The wind protection is amazing. I don't actually know how, but I know that the windscreen actually is automatic. It goes up and down. So I'll try and look at that here in a bit. The throttle, like I said, does feel a bit sluggish on this thing. Um, the handlebars are not quite as wide as the GS, but still very nice, very plush, um, super comfortable. Something people used to complain about on Triumphs is the engine heat. I mean, look, on any of these bikes, you're going to get some engine heat. Like, that's just part of it. I mean, this thing is a really smooth ride. And one thing I love about the triple engines that Triumph makes is they actually make a super vibration-free engine. I mean, this, this thing is really butter smooth. You know, if you want a vibration-free motorcycle, this would be it. I do feel a bit of heat coming off on my legs quite a bit more than the 800. 800 I never really had that problem of course you know it was an 800 it wasn't a 1200 so the screen seems pretty intuitive I mean it's got a lot of information just right off the bat what is this guy doing so dangerous man when they let people go like that because if I were to just cut around them I mean that could have been really bad I could have gotten hit so I hate it when people do that like just go with the flow of traffic and then let that guy find his own way I don't know why people just stop and and I know they're trying to be kind but it, it it can really screw up somebody behind you that doesn't know what's going on doesn't know you're trying to let that guy go and all of a sudden you've got an accident on your hands so you have to be so careful when you're riding around the wind protection is really great on this thing like I said I think the windscreen is down in the low position at the moment um, but I, I'm getting a little bit of buffeting on my head but it's clean air it's not it's not tussling me around uh, the windscreen's quite wide Kind of a cool windscreen design, you know, kind of flat in the middle, but uh, I still prefer the GS windscreen. You do have the semi-active uh, suspension on here, which is great. Um, I love actually this, the way that the semi-active suspension looks on this year model, as opposed to the newer Triumphs, is, uh, is much better. You know, they've got these nice little caps on the top. On the other ones, they just have like this weird... Um, 
I don't know, they just have like this weird, just like line going down into it, which I don't like. So let's get up to a little bit higher speeds here, see how she cruises. The quick shifter, really smooth, very nice. Wow, I mean, the suspension on this thing is incredible. Like, I feel super plush right now. Super stable, taking one hand off the bars. Yeah, I mean, I could do long trips on this puppy for sure. It definitely wants to stay upright. <laughs> So another thing that I want to point out here that I actually really like is I love the switch gear on this thing. Like it just all feels really smooth, really nice, you know, sticks up really easily. You can check it all out. Super nice. Um, a little bit clunky here, quite a few buttons, but, but yeah, I love this. I think it looks really solid and it looks like a premium bike. Um, you know, everything feels really nice. The cockpit is really huge for me. I love a bike's cockpit. Like, what does it look like when I'm actually riding it? And this thing, you know, it's really smooth. Your legs just fit right in here and it just molds into the bike. So I really, really like that. Okay, yeah, so there's the electric screen. Kind of nice. So you can get, you can actually, like if you put that up all the way, that is a ton of protection. You like it? Yeah. Of course he likes my bike. It's an amazing bike. <laughs> Alright, so you got the Brembo brakes. This one has spoked wheels, which is beautiful. Um, you've got the WP, the white power suspension, which is super plush. I mean, probably one of the best suspensions that I've ever ridden on. So I really, really like that. I love the finish that they've got on this bike with the uh, two-tone right here. And it's got kind of a matte finish. Uh, I actually think that this engine is one of the best looking engines on a motorcycle. I really think Triumph did a good job, especially on the newer ones. On the 22 models, uh, 2022 models. They just look really good. Um, you've got the oversized foot pegs here, which just feel really, really nice on foot. Maybe if I put the oversized foot pegs on the GS, it would feel more of that forward position. I don't know. Maybe because on the GS, they have a little bit smaller ones. Um, I like I like actually that they built in here a little um, protector here for the reservoir, uh, you know, for the brake reservoir, just because that looks that looks really smooth, you know. Mine mine just kind of, it, it's kind of tucked back, but, but it's not the same. Um, you've got the arrow. Uh, exhaust pipe here. You know, drive shaft, absolutely incredible. It's got a single-sided swing arm, which I think looks really, really nice. Of course, comes this one comes with the center stand, and as you can see, everything is just really, really um, tucked away neatly, and they really put a lot of thought into the aesthetics of this thing. I do, you know, it comes stock with these little uh, wind blockers here on the side which I think are a great addition and he's got the additional auxiliary lights and the front lights of this thing look really really cool you got kind of that buggy look not a super huge fan of this fairing I prefer the newer fairing on the newer triumphs but um but yeah it's an okay looking bike like the look of the bike isn't the best but but it's a it's it's pretty nice looking pretty nice looking uh on this one he's got the heated passenger the pillion and the rider seat so that's really nice you've got see here it says triumph heated seats and the seats are super comfortable i love a nice wide seat and this thing is so comfortable man i mean you know i love kind of sitting down in a bike i love that the tank comes up a little bit when you sit on it and yeah it just feels really really nice so a couple of things i wanted to hit on after going back and riding the gs after riding the tiger for it yesterday it was amazing really really nice but i found that the tiger is actually super super planted like it feels really really almost the same maybe even a little more planted than this but absolutely love this motorcycle this is still my top pick but you know, for instance, like the wide handlebars on this bike, um, you know, because they are so wide, occasionally I do feel like my arms are sails because my arms are a little bit wider out there and they're catching more wind. And I do get a little bit of, of like wheel wobble, not much, but it's just very slight. If you kind of loosen up your grip a little bit, that does go away. But it is something to think about, you know, with the smaller handlebars on the Tiger, you do get less of that wind kind of using your arms as sails and you know I, I went to the forums advrider.com and a lot of other GS owners have experienced this as well so that is something that you should think about when you're looking at bikes if that's something that really bothers you at higher speeds um, it, it's not really a deal breaker for me you know I just kind of loosened my grip a little bit and it's perfectly fine no big deal you know I can do 80 miles an hour on this thing 
not officially, um, <laughs> 80 miles an hour and you know, it's no big deal. So it's only on really windy days that I really have to worry about it. So another thing to note that's really important in the 2022 Triumph Tiger, um, you know, of course there's reviews not about that bike, but we're talking about the iteration of the different models and how they've changed. But I, I believe, I could be wrong, you guys can throw it in the comments, but I believe it's the only uh, adventure motorcycle in this class right, it's a 1200 that actually has a 21 inch front wheel and it also has the shaft drive. So, you know, that is something really cool. Like if you're looking for a 21 inch front wheel and on the 2022 model of the Triumph Tiger, you actually do get a shaft drive with a 21 inch front wheel. So, you know, that thing is really nice. A lot of people say it's really nice for off-road riding. That's another thing I wanna to touch on on the 2021 model of the Triumph Tiger that I just reviewed. Uh, in comparison to the GS, it, the telelever suspension on this bike is absolutely incredible. That's one of the reasons I bought it because I love that it has almost zero dive when you do hit the brakes. I will say if I'm gonna do a lot of off-road riding, I would pick the Tiger because, uh, you know, I just kind of like how the suspension rides. Um, you know, it does have a lot more dive, but the suspension just feels like it, it would be better off-road. You know, it, it just has more off-road characteristics and this feels a little bit more heavy front end because of that tail lever suspension. But most of my riding is touring and road riding and really hitting road corners and stuff, cornering on the road and stuff. So for that reason, the GS is definitely the bike for me. The more I get used to this bike, the more I feel like, okay, yeah, like this is, uh, this is something I could, you know, ride. And, I, and once you get used to the flickability of it, um, yeah. You really start becoming one with the bike, that's what it's all about. The gearing's quite for forgiving on this bike as well. Um, yeah. Look, this is this is something that's great about riding, man, is if if you like a road, doing it in reverse, you get uh, such a different viewpoint. So like, you can think a road is amazing. Like coming up here was incredible, but now going down is even just more, like it's a different kind of incredible. It's so cool. Love, love to do roads in reverse sometimes. Okay, that was interesting. The front end kind of pulled the left a little bit when I braked hard down that hill. Again, just phenomenal brakes. You feel like you've got a ton of control on this thing. Of course, you really do have to put a lot of input into these handlebars. I do love the blacked out handlebars, really nice. Really nice, love the blacked out handlebars. I wish, that's, that's one thing that I wish my bike had was the blacked out handlebars, because I think you get that on the triple black edition. Mine's not a triple black, so then you would get the blacked out engine, the blacked out shaft drive, and uh, you'd also get the the um, the blacked out handlebars, which I don't have on the GS. All right, guys, so I wanted to give you some final comparisons on what I think between the R1250GS and the Triumph Tiger 1200 XCA model. Uh, of course, the one I rode is a 2021 model, and this is a 2019, just so that you know for comparison reasons. Starting off with comfort, I think that the Triumph Tiger gets an A-plus in comfort. Of course, I would say this has an A-plus as well, but uh, I forget what they call the riding mode in the Tiger, but in this they call the comfort mode, like road mode, which is gonna give you, you know, a little bit more comfort, more plush, you know, it's using the semi-active suspension to read the road. I would say the semi-active suspension is great on the Tiger, and I think it, it pairs right up with the GS. I mean, that thing feels super planted. I'm very confident on that bike, maybe slightly more confident on the GS, uh, just because I feel like in some of the turns where, it, you know, when you hit bumps while you're cornering, sometimes it felt like you know, jolted a little bit where it doesn't do it as much on this. So maybe maybe in that regard, the GS would win, but still think I'm still gonna give the Tiger 1200 a A+, because I think the comfort is exceptional. It would be great for long touring, and it would be awesome for two-up riding if that's something you're gonna do. All the gadgets and everything you're getting for a great price, heated seats, everything, so comfort, A+. Uh, that leads me into suspension. Again, I already talked about the suspension, but the white power suspension on that bike is incredible. Uh, one of the most comfortable bikes I've ever ridden. So yeah, the suspension's great. I don't like the fork dive in the 
in the front of that bike. Uh, whereas, you know, you have the tail lever suspension on this and it's amazing. You don't really experience any dive when you really hit the brakes. So uh, I'm gonna say an A minus on the suspension just because I think there's a little bit lacking there. But if you're gonna do a lot of off-road, I would definitely choose that bike over this just because I feel like it has a little bit more off-road characteristics when it comes to suspension, even though it has that dive in the front. Sometimes, I don't know, I kind of like that a little bit more on an off-road bike. Uh, the, the handling on the front feels less heavy, if that makes sense. Not weight-wise, but I don't know, it just feels like less, less effort on the front. I don't know, I kind of like it off-road riding. So number three, the cockpit. I'm also going to give it an A- minus on the cockpit. I really like the switch gear on the Tiger. Something I am lacking on some of these bikes is I would love at times, you know, maybe an option to have backlit buttons because at night there's a crap ton of buttons on these bikes and at night it's kind of hard to see what you're clicking on so you kind of have to know where everything is. Of course, once you get used to a bike, it kind of is easy. The Tiger some of the switch gear on the left hand side just seems like it has way too much and i was kind of confusing the they have like a a up down left right toggle that you can toggle through the menu select i guess you would call it the menu selector and on that bike it's right next to the blinkers or the indicators and sometimes i found myself uh getting lost and clicking the wrong one so that's something that was kind of annoying um you know, I, I really like how simple BMW's made it. And of course, some things you want specific buttons for, like I love on the GS, you have a specific button for turning on and off ABS and traction control. And as well, you have um, a button dedicated for changing the front and rear suspension. So I really like that. And the Wonder Wheel is incredible on this bike. It's really easy to navigate. So yeah, I think the cockpit's great. The TFT is definitely better on the GS, just because the TFT has, I think it's bolder characteristics it lights up a little bit brighter and there's different colors that are really easy to see the colors seem to be the colors are almost like analog colors on the on the tiger you know it has a little bit of different colors but they're very earthy colors they're, they don't really stand out that much and so it it's not as easy to read and it seemed like on the bottom there was a bunch of little menus that were very small and it just wasn't very easy. It was too much information and too difficult to read. So even though it has a TFT, and I would definitely rather have a TFT than an analog, but uh, the TFT on the GS definitely wins. Um, something else is the quick shifter. Let's talk about the quick shifter. Love the quick shifter on this bike. It made me start thinking I wouldn't be opposed to looking at an automatic motorcycle because the quick shifter is so great, man. Like it changes how you ride. It's so much more comfortable and you can just stay on the throttle. Uh, one thing I will say on the GS, the quick shifter going down is a bit rough, a bit clunky. And as well, coming up, if you're not revved up to higher gears, you really need to be, or it's gonna, it's gonna jerk you when you do shift. On the Tiger, up and down, it was the smoothest quick shifter I've ever used. I mean, that thing was incredible. So yeah, definitely, I'm gonna say that the Tiger gets an A plus on the quick shifter, maybe even A plus plus because it's so smooth. And uh, I would say it definitely beats the GS with the quick shifter for sure. Comfort and the way it goes up and down effortlessly, and it really doesn't matter what rev range you're in, it's gonna shift. So really good job Triumph on that, giving you a thumbs up. And uh, I, I'll move into the engine from there. So I think the engine, you're gonna feel engine heat on that Triumph Tiger. It's, it's warmer than the GS for sure. Um, I felt it on my legs, it was pretty warm. But uh, I love that triple engine. That triple engine is just so smooth. You know, when you're going down the road, you don't really feel any rumble. It's kind of like just floating on a cloud. That's how the 800 was when I had a Tiger 800. And it was super smooth. One thing I will say that I didn't like about the engine characteristic is when you're in that road mode, of course, when you're in sport, it's a different bike, comes alive, really much faster throttle response. Uh, everything stiffens up a little bit, so really like that. But in its comfort mode, or whatever they call it on the Tiger, um, in its comfort mode, it felt really sluggish. You know, you, you felt like you really had to twist it and then wait for that for that throttle kick on. And of course, just like all Tigers for a long time, once you start getting up into that 6,000 RPM range, you really start seeing the bike turn and have different characteristics and it really turns into a different animal. So that's really nice. There was plenty of power, but definitely more in sport mode than the comfort mode, whatever they call the comfort mode. Um, just going through a few prices here. Uh, of course, so he, my friend bought his Tiger XCA 2021 model. It was like brand new when he got it. It had 8,000 kilometers on it or 5,000 miles on the clock. And he paid 15,000 USD. Great deal used. It's a 2021 model, 15,000 USD. 
that's great. That's a great price for these bigger bore bikes. Um, I paid 18,000 USD for the GS and it's two years older. Um, would I do it again? Definitely, I would still stick with the GS. Uh, his Tiger sometimes has some problems with the uh, keyless ignition where he has to sit there and it doesn't really register. I don't know if other Tiger um, owners are experiencing that same thing. I know some of the Tigers are having TFT problems as well. And Triumph only gives a one year warranty on new TFTs. Not a huge vote of confidence in their own gear. So if you do have to replace that and they're only giving you a one year warranty, that kind of sounds a little suspect to me. So um, I haven't had any problems, you know, thank, thank God on this one. So it's been really, really good. Um, but I love this bike, I would do it again. I still love, prefer the ergonomics of this bike. When, you, when you're turning on this bike, the handling is just a lot better, talking about handling now. You know, when you're, when you're flicking back and forth, I'm gonna give the Tiger an A, just a flat A. I'm gonna give this an A plus because you really become this bike and when you're moving, you just flick your hips and the bike goes, you know, the center of gravity is super low. Center of gravity is low on that bike, but at some points it does feel top heavy, like you have to pull the bike into the corners. And in the GS, you flick your hips one way or another and the bike is gonna go. So I still think the handling is better on this. I think the windscreen is better on the Tiger, not because it's automatic, but because of the wind protection. I, I find this lacking a little bit. I did find it a little bit weird in the low setting. It's like the high setting on this screen on the GS because I'm getting just a little bit of buffeting on top of my helmet, but it's, but it's, um, it's clean air but I would just like, like just a little bit more, just a little bit more BMW, just a little bit more on the screen. And I'd be completely happy with that. It was wider as well. So really good job on the wind protection. It had the wind deflectors on the sides, which this does as well. They just look a little different. So overall, I think it's an incredible bike. I think it just depends on what your budget is, what you're looking for. If you want something a little bit more off-road oriented, um, and that's more what you're gonna be focused on on a big bike, I definitely think the Tiger is the way to go. The price point is definitely lower, so if, if that's more your budget style, go with the Triumph. I think that they make incredible bikes, they last forever, and they're right up there with Japanese reliability. I think all the bikes out there are really doing a good job at the moment. Of course, you get some people that have problems, but I really think that it's an incredible motorcycle. So if it's something you're looking into, throw something in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you guys if you think the Triumph Tiger beats the BMW GS R1250, and if that's something that you uh, prefer the more budget friendly option or if you know the better handling and some of the characteristics are more of a value to you on the gs i know for me the gs is definitely a bike that i love and i've grown to love it more and more the more i ride it so going on a big trip this weekend by the time you watch this i'm going to be on my way to porto to do a trip through the wine country through the duro valley so really excited riding along the river it's supposed to be one of the it's been ranked online on many different websites as the most beautiful road in the world so I'm really excited to get that video for you. It's gonna be a hot weekend. So um, I'm gonna try and get you the best footage that I possibly can of me not sweating my butt off. So anyways, that's my kind of last round analysis. So thanks so much for watching in and let's finish this video off. All right guys, thanks so much for watching today. Really love that you guys are tuning in. We've hit over 200 subscribers, which is absolutely incredible. Really excited. I love the community that you guys bring. I love the comments you leave. So continue to do that. Love to have conversations with you guys. Um, it's been a great journey. I've, I've got another trip coming up next weekend. By the time this is posted, I will be on my way to Porto to do a long ride along through the wine country. Uh, so it's gonna be a great video. Really excited to release that to you guys. And next weekend I'll be posting uh, uh, another video of the trip trip and on Instagram I'll be you'll be able to follow along the journey so all right catch you guys later thanks for watching ride safe and we'll catch you on the pavement